So Excel Wings Lite is a very powerful tool. We've been trying it out for the last uh, few days and it is just tremendous. You can create Excel based tools. You can do advanced automation. You can connect to any other system on the planet via an API call. You can analyze data, Python based analysis, charts, run statistical procedures, as well as ML model if you'd like to. These are the database credentials which are required. Host, database, username, password, port, your database, whether it is Postgres or and the schema in case of uh, Postgres schema will be there. MySQL no schema will be there. Now I have the various functions here. So let's do, see what this does. So I will say list tables. I will say list table. So now it is connecting to the database and you will get the logs here, right? This is important to review the logs in case of an error. So now it has created a new sheet which has got the tables and the column count. So it shows me the tables in the table in the database. I will say for this table now, please get me the table data. So I will say cable data and get the table data. So now it has created a table data here. So it has extracted this data. There's, this has got a million rows, 131 MB. This is the column structure. And then these are the first 20 sample rows. So it gives you a very quick idea about the table structure. Then next I will say, say I want to analyze this data, right? So I want to pull some records. So I have here I have say I have, I have given 10,000 records. It is a million record. I can pull all the million records also. By the way, it takes one minute only. So here I will say, okay, get random records. So now what it is doing is, it is going, uh, re reaching out to the data warehouse and it knew this sheet would have created. This is a new sheet where we have the table. Uh, this uh, 10,000 rows have been pulled for that data, right? So now, next, what we'll do, sometimes I may not want random records. Sometimes I might, I, I might want some specific uh, records only. Say only the, uh, only the first, I want to get only 1,000 rows and uh, which are only blue color. Uh, right. So this can be any custom query, by the way. You can get an AI coder to get the query or write yourself. So I will say, Ki run this query. I want to run this query. So I'll say, get custom query. I will run it. So when I run it, it has added a new sheet here. And if I see here, it's a new sheet called custom. And I go here. And if here a query is displayed, if an error comes, error is also displayed here. And if you see, all are blue colored. Job is equal to blue colored. So sometimes you might want to... Uh, pull some filtered record. Now moving ahead. Now assuming you have the data now here, whether from a database pool or your own data. Now we want to analyze it. So then we have to do one very important thing. Uh, suppose I will be using this table for analysis. So this is formatted as a table. I just need to give this table one name, DEF, so that the code knows which table to be picked up. And the same name I will keep here. So the code will be picking up the table name here. So whichever table name you uh, give here, that will be used for analysis. So if you want to some other table, uh, you want to analyze, just change the name here and code will pick up that table. So first what we will do is I will say perform EDA, exploratory data analysis. So I will say perform EDA. So now it is uh, uh, running. Right, so we got this uh, log. So it's always a good idea to check these logs just to see if some errors are there or not. So what have we got here now? So what we have got is first we have got uh, this EDA tables. So this is showing the numeric variables. Uh, for the numeric variables, it is showing we are getting count, mean, median, you know, variances and the percentile distributions and so on. The formatting can be improved. Uh, then for the categorical variables, I am getting all the distributions, you know, counts and percentages. You can add more, you know, I'm just, this is just very quick, simple one. Now, then I have also asked it to create a correlation matrix. So this is the correlation matrix. Then I have also asked it to now create all the charts. So this is the correlation heat map uh, chart. Uh, the correlation is looking little off, but that's fine. Then there are these sets of charts, box plots and all the, these are the charts which I have asked it to create. Formatting can be you know improved and you can arrange it properly and so on. But I have just dumped the charts uh, here. This is just to give you an idea that the the same concept can be used in case you want to create a report, automated report, you want to create automated dashboards. So the same concepts, tables and the formatting and the charts can be used to create, generate those reports and dashboards also. Now we have got this data. So next I will say, okay, score and decide, you know, basically build a model. So I am now running an XGBoost model here on the response variable. And, and here we have the model evaluation, right? This is the Gini coefficient, uh, train Gini and test Gini. So 75, 75, no overfitting, good model. Anyway, it's a mock data. Then we have the confusion matrices uh, for training and the test. Then the classification matrices and then other some of the other reports. Uh, you can add any other, uh, depending on your model type, this will differ. This could this will differ, right? Then we have the score deciles here. 
uh, right? These are the score deciles for train and uh, test decile chart. You know. uh, then we have the ROC curve and the uh, gain chart. Right? So, you know, we ran the whole cycle from database uh, pull to charts visualization and model build. Model build, uh, you know, will be a difficult here. I, the model build part I added here just to give you an idea about the kind of workflows you can do, uh, workflows that you can execute. Uh, model build typically becomes an iterative process and might be a challenge here, but if not a if not a model build, but there are many other there are some mo uh, machine learning model which you might be able to run here. There are some statistical processes that you will be able to run here. But when you are looking at this, keep in mind the various components and the capabilities that are available to you. You can use these capabilities and components to create. Sometimes you might want to give it as a user interface, some interface like this. Sometimes it is everything is running in the background only. There is no interface. You are just clicking it and it is running. Sometimes you might want to give it to a user. Sometimes it might be with you. Right. But these are the components and the capabilities which are available and these can be stitched together either in the front end or in the back end the way you would like. Uh, other thing to keep in mind, this is a uh, this is a demo. So, you know, normally I would not suggest to keep your username, password exposed like this here. For demo purpose, I am keeping it. Otherwise, it will need to be kept in a script or some other place. And the other thing is this is now for a demo purpose, this is mock data. So, everything will run very quickly. Real life data, you know, a lot of iterations are required. But the advantage is this, you know, when I will, if I have to do a next client project using Excel wings, these are component code I will take as an example, give it to AI coder saying that, you know, here is a, here is a chart code and, but I want, this is my new data and this is the new chart, okay, type of chart I want. With an AI coder, I already have a working code. Even if it is for a mock data, it is much more easier for an AI coder or us to adapt that code with the real data. So here I have given the database uh, connection. Now keep in mind for database connection, it cannot uh, Python, uh, a direct connection is not possible. It is through a web API layer. So I already have a web API layer. So this is my uh, API layer. You can also use it by the way. This will connect, uh, this will help. This is a, this is open source and this is deployed live. So any, you can connect to any database using this uh, API layer. layer. Now this is an API server which will help you do the connection. But keep in mind your credentials are going to pass through my server. So, this is open source, so you can set up your own server if you would like, and I will drop the link uh, how to uh, set how to set that up. I have covered that in previous uh, videos. This is a blank sheet. When you first do a uh, add-in, when you first deploy the add-in, here you will get these sample codes which are there, and these are very important. You know, you have the requirements will have all the packages, and if you are familiar with Python, this is very straightforward. Even if you are not familiar with Python. Just keep in mind here, uh, the codes will be done with an AI coder and I will just share how. The all Whatever you want to do, if you see here, hello world is very important. If I click hello world here, a hello world comes here. Now, this is very, very important. Why? Because everything is def. Def is a Python function. So, whatever you want to do, we have to let the AI coder know, okay, please wrap it up in a Python function. This is standard Python function, which of, of, of course accesses the uh, Excel objects. And before that, you put a script. Once you put at the rate script, it will be available here for running. If you put uh, at the rate function like here, it will be available as a uh, hello will be available from a function here. So user defined function can be done in this manner. Now, if you look at this script, what is happening at this again, simple script. So what is happening here? Here it is going and picking up something from the web. Then it is creating a new sheet and it is creating a chart. So if I have to run this, if I run this, what it does is it goes and picks up the data and creates a chart here. So essentially, we are doing the same thing. This code is what 100 lines, but essentially your code could be 1000 line, 2000 line, doesn't make a difference. But essentially, everything has to be inside a def or a function, <coughs> def in a function. Now, when you have to get this code made in the previous, uh, in my previous video, I had shown then how to get it made from an AI, uh, AI coder. So, and this time I am also sharing in addition. I'm also sharing along with the codes, you know, I'm also sharing a AI coder instructions here. So if you are getting it made from AI coder, you can share these instructions. These are not for AI coders only for human coders also, but some of my learnings and some of the bugs which I had to, you know, some issues which I had to solve. So whenever you're working with AI coder, you can share these set of instructions along with the existing code. So as soon as the AI coder looks at the existing code, it gets, it understands. And then you share the modifications that I had shown in my previous video. Now let's look at our our this current set of code. Now this current set of code is around 2000 lines, right? And again, not not too much because there are seven eight functions are there, right? First, there are seven eight functions are there. Second thing is lot of the part of the code because I want it to run in an automated manner, right? Though there are a lot of these what is called error catching, try and catch what is called try catch block. Error catching is there. Then there are different kind of validations which are uh, added in. If the port number is not there given, then for Postgres, please use 3306. If it is still not some issue is there, then please print this kind of a message. So all these, these print statements, if you see, these are the ones which are being shown in the log window here. 
these are very important because when I was creating the script, some errors and all were coming. So at this point, I will know because of this, I will know which point error is uh, uh, happening or if there is some issue happening or something to be taken care of. So core part of the code, actually, if you ask me, will probably be 200 lines only. Now, let's, let's look at some of the important uh, important angles of this code. Now, this is Python, so it, I'm very comfortable. I can go line by line, but uh, in order to understand the code, the easiest part is to share it with the AI coder and ask it in case you need some explanation or how is something done. A AI coder will be the fastest way to go through it. Now, I will share some important pieces. One is that, uh, you know, this is fast API server. So what is this fast API server? For connecting to a database, Excel Wings cannot directly connect, uh, connect to a direct connection. So it has to go via a web API layer. API server, it can be a fast API, it could be REST API. So let me, what is a fast API server? Let me just give you a very quick idea. Now this is something I had covered in my previous posts here. What this fast API server is, how to deploy it, there are videos and so on. So this, this fast API server, this fast API server is an API uh, a server which acts as a middleman. So here, this is our SQL query. Here it is a this is a LLM app or it can be Excel. So here instead of LLM app, we have Excel or Excel Wings, which is giving an SQL query, which is directly doesn't come to a database. It comes to this fast API server in between, which sends it to a database. And there are a variety of reasons for it why we'd like to do this uh, instead of direct connection. So I won't go into it right now. But this acts as a uh, connector. I can connect any front end, whether Excel Flowwise custom GPT to database using this. Uh, in between middlemen. Now, important thing is in this fast API server, in my case, I have given an IP whitelist, you know, just that only so and so IP, only if it is coming from my websites and so on, it should come. If you have not given uh, that IP whitelist, then it is fine. Otherwise, what you have to keep in mind. So, if you have given IP whitelist, then you have to allow origins, you have to add add in dot excel wings dot org because this is the IP which is which comes uh, when. Uh, when the uh, when uh, IP which is used in the, which comes with a web re web request, so I have added I have added that in the instructions also. So if you see the I have added some points in the instructions uh, also about how the cores is to be handled by the fast API server and the header which comes with Excel wings the header which comes it is going to look something like this you know this is how the header will uh, header will come. But if you are not using IP whitelist, then just keep it star dot star. So this is one important piece uh, for web API uh, calls to your custom server. If you are making an API call to OpenAI or Gemini, uh, then you know, this is this doesn't make a, doesn't make any difference. Now let us look at the first uh, this thing script. Just exactly as we saw there, everything will be script and there will be a def. I, I use async def. Async is asynchronous processing so that concurrent things can go forward. By default, I, I use it, but not don't worry about it. All this print statement and try statements are there. And now if you see the basic structure is always the same. I'm connection parameters I am picking up from these B3 value, B4 value from that sheet, from that cell. It is being picked up. Uh, after that, there are these debugging statements are there. And these are the SQL query, list table. This is the MySQL query and Postgres. So keep in mind, MySQL, Postgres, separate queries are there. So they, the placeholders are there. So based on the table name, the tab, uh, based on the database uh, connection details, it, it will be inserted here. here, not required here actually. Here for Postgres schema will be required. After that, the important piece is how is the API call being made? API call is being made using PyFetch. So whenever you want to make API call to a uh, to your any API uh, uh, endpoint, it could be a database, it could be a Gemini, it could be OpenAI, or it could be as you want to connect uh, from Excel, you want to connect to Zoho, you want to connect to SAP, Oracle, any system which has an API, you can connect with, uh, with Excel Wings. So basically, because of PyFetch, Excel Wings will be able to connect to any other system on the planet which has got APIs, just like uh, NA10 or make.com, you know, you can connect to anywhere. So this is the API PyFetch and this, what is the request? The method is get, uh, this is all standard stuff, method is get. Full URL, we are saying full URL, where, what, what does it have to do there? This full, full URL, if you see, this full URL is again a query string which is made, uh, uh, full, URL, uh, full URL is a combination of the API URL which we are passing above and then the query string. So this is what is passed to the API endpoint, this is based on the API documentation. And API documentation link, this is fast API server, so slash doc will be the API documentation link. I will leave it, uh, uh, I will leave it here for you. You can use my API server or you can set up your own API server. Keep in mind, if you're using my API server, your SQL request will go through, but every, all the credentials will pass through my server. So always keep that whenever you, you are using any 
uh, intermediate API server, your credentials are going to pass through there. Now this next uh, function is get table data, right? So everything else remains the same connection and everything remains the same, just the SQL query will now be different. So for the uh, getting the metadata, we are using a different sets of two, three sets of queries. So we are hitting the table, there is information schema uh, table. So from there we are getting column uh, column names and so two, three queries are uh, passed. If you remember in the table data, we get two, three blocks of information. So two, three queries are passed, that's, that's it. And we have the function for get random if you remember random record so everything else remains the same you know this connection everything uh, remains the same only thing is this is one very simple one liner query all that we are doing is order by rand uh, r a n d random this thing this this will pull and the limit number of records is being pulled from here so it will pull that many records in a random fashion so this is one liner this is the single one liner main core part of the program rest is all error catching and the you know parameter picking up you know if you look at the guest get first n record there there won't be any random that will just be limit uh, we have the get custom query so in get custom query the only thing which is which, which will be different will be that the custom query period the connection remain everything remains the same we are picking up the custom query from the master sheet uh, from this master sheet cell value b14 so whatever you have put in b value b14 will be picked up and it will be sent to for execution so this is the perform eda function here the important part very critical part here also in, in the scoring deciding part also define categorical variable it is very important to differentiate between the categorical variable and the numerical variable so here the values are hard coded so if you have a new data set you will have to give the new variable list here and then it should ideally work uh, you just have to give the categorical variable names here numeric variables are the ones all the variable excluding or after removing the categorical variable so once we have the categorical and numerical variable separate then it is easy to do all the eda so these are the critical pieces and as you go ahead then uh, you know uh, new sheets are being created charts are being created uh, these are the percentile and means the parameters are being passed that i want so and so percentile this and so uh, so and then we are finding the missing values so each of these are finding one component of it and then the then the charts are created so you know these are this is where the distribution box plots and so on are created and this is where you can change the this is where you can change the format of it you can also change the placement of it now this is the def and uh, def this is uh, the def for scoring and deciding so this I, i'll just share one or two uh, uh, parts important parts here here again this is given by in a step by step manner you know step by step manner the first is you know read the table from the master sheet then the step two is prepare the data set uh, and the target feature so here it is this cust id you know cust id and the response tag we need to drop right we don't want these two uh, cust id and response tag we need to drop Categor categorical column we always have to specify so here again we are picking up hard coding it there are various ways to pick it, pick it up on the fly using python or using llm maybe in the next videos i will go into it but this is where the change will be required you can do it or you can give this to an uh, uh, ai coder uh, to uh, get the change to get the uh, change done so now after that you know we are following we are splitting it so important piece here is this you may want to run some other statistical process so it is possible to run all these things in a workflow manner so now we are splitting test and train we are splitting then we are using xg boot xg boost classifier then we are doing uh, uh, scoring uh, uh, okay we are doing the scoring of test and train and then we are finding all these matrices then we are finding the gini coefficient uh, confusion matrix so all the all, all these are being uh, uh, all these things are being captured whatever we are showing there are being captured so any change that you want to make the existing uh, AI coder instruction as well as the existing scripts, you can share with uh, uh, your favorite LLM coder, AI coder and they will make the change as, as you require.